Hello, and welcome to today's episode of Real Life, Real Love. We're going to be talking about the energetics behind sex today, because I think that's a really important thing. When we're watching other things on social media, Haley and I were talking about how people talk about, um, you know, like, can you sleep around? Should you sleep around? What makes you a slut? What doesn't make you a slut? Like all these different things that kind of get talked about. And also this kind of concept that, uh, if women sleep around, they're somehow dirty or like used or I don't know, there's different words that are being used. And what we're going to be talking about today is the energetics behind sex and what to do so that you can consciously make that decision of who you want to sleep with, when, how many people, like anything, because it's your body and it's your life to experience. So you should be making the decisions. However, we are aware that when we connect with another human being in that way, we mix our auras together. We connect and things get shared and shifted um, and even dumped into the other person, stuff like that. So that's going to be our major topic today to talk about so that you know when you sleep with someone how to keep your energy clear, centered, grounded, whatever you need to do to stay healthy. Would you like to introduce yourself, Haley? Yeah. So hi, I'm Haley Henderson. I am coach I help women dress in clothes that make them happy but in such a way where I don't just tell you what to do I help you understand why so you can just go and recreate it no matter what is in season no matter what your budget is you understand like the actual constructural dynamics of what it is that fits your body fits your lifestyle makes you feel your best because when you feel your best you look your best and I mean who doesn't want that (laughs) yeah I was, you, you must look your best today and feel your best. I was already complimenting you on it, but you just seem so alive today in this outfit, which I was saying before we got on this call, like it's so strange because it's black. And to me, black is not like a pick me up happy color, like wearing a pink or a yellow or an orange. Yeah. You look fabulous in it. Yeah. I think, um, uh, there, I mean, there's a, which is top, today's topic as well. Like there's a conscious energetic part of color and I love color and I spend time looking at how it performs, what it does, color psychology. I look at habits and patterns of other people and I absorb that information and we become that because it's like an energy and black represents a lot of interesting stuff. And if you wear it in a specific way, so like these earrings, they're like very delicate with it. They've got like a, um, what are they called? They're just like a, it's a fashion thing. It's like a little jewel on it. So it's got like a bit of a shine, but it's almost like a lace to it. And so there's ways that you can make black elegant because there's a piece of it that's like black is mysterious. You don't like it at night. You don't really know what's in the dark, but it's also quite elegant, like in like tiny little details and black can be worn with such grace and elegance when it's um, skinny slim design. And I mean, as in like long lines, not meaning like you've got to be skinny slim, but actually just long lines, like, if you wear like long black leggings and you wear like a long top or like a long jacket, it creates a long line and that creates that like elegance. And I also try to remember like what black mascara does for us. It just like accentuates. It's not like, here's your mascara. It's more like, here's your mascara. And so it just has like that appeal to it. It's just like that delicate piece of it. And if you like spend a couple of minutes like Googling and looking up like black tailored clothing and you'll see that it's like tiny things that like trims and lines that make that difference whereas if you look at like a black hoodie like a big black jumper a big something karada it doesn't give you the same it looks like a black lump of coal so it's like those visual elements and then what color psychology does to us that creates that so it's like little delicate pieces that gives that like pretty kind of look to it. (laughs) Okay, before we jump into our topic, as you were talking, I thought, would you be comfortable, because I'm throwing this at you right now, sharing like, my thought was like, what would be your top three colors for lingerie? Like, I want to accomplish. So often people will see, and it's how you feel. So if I put on black, like underwear, 
it, if it's plain, I'm like, ugh, boring. Whereas some people will see that as um, rebellious. I always feel sexy in black underwear. Yeah, mm-hmm. so people feel like like rebellious in it or um, bad girl or um, strappy bondage type stuff. Whereas if you put on baby pink, it can be in the exact same design with like all of your accessories and hardware and stuff. And it's going to be like a little bit like, Candy, sweet. Like it's going to be almost like strawberry. And you could hear this like noise come out of the person who's like wearing that kind of color. Um, if you want it to be sexy, it is going to be the color you feel the sexiest in. And if you don't know, it's literally going to a store and trying stuff on and going, would I wear this if I was listening to Beyonce? Would I wear this if I was listening to Rihanna? Like, what is the song that makes you feel sexy? Like, I mean, I use music because it's artistic, emotive expression. It gives us that feeling like if you stand in the change room and you close your eyes and you put on like a song, you go, yeah, okay, cool. It's red or mm, green. So I, for me, it's, it's tapping into something that's fiery, not mysterious. I feel like black can be like almost boring a little bit in lingerie for me. Like it's just stuff. Whereas if I put on orange, like that's fire. I was like, <laughs> I have to buy this. And I, when I wear orange, because I think of it like that, it gives that impression of fire, which is also your sacral chakra, which is your sexual organs and your sensuality and sexuality. And I spend a lot of time working on that energy center for myself. So when I wear orange, people are like, damn, I've never seen orange look that good. I'm like, do you know what it is? It is not the dress. It is not anything else apart from it's the work I've done myself. And I'm proud of that. And, you know, I invite people into the conversation of just look it up. Just just go for an explore. Um, so, people, yeah, they'll find black, red, orange as like those type of colors will get you in that kind of mood. Red is your root chakra and it's also your bloodline, your heritage, your first like entrance into this world. Um, it's also associated with passion and love normally because we've been conditioned by marketing to think that it's that, but I honestly think it's orange because of your sacral and all of those things. But because we are a product of our environment, often people see that as red, like with your red lips or other red lips. Like it just brings out that kind of like when you're like blush and those kind of cute things. Um, and then you can look at other fun colors that like you – personally align with so it could be like a green like an emerald or a jade kind of green it could be um you know earthy kind of like grounded browns and tans can look so beautiful on the person who feels their best in it browns and tans in lingerie huh yeah it's an illusion of being naked as well like if you put on lacy brown colors that like have this kind of look on your chest there's no way you would look at it and be like oh you'd look at it and be like do i i think i like it like it get because when you explore it it gets or, or let yourself go to explore it, it gives you that opportunity to be like do i i think i do and then that's when design and proportion and like the visual piece comes into it where like when you have something that goes like this over your chest as opposed to like that like it gives you that just like here i'm coming whereas this is like oh let's go down like it gives you those feelings because it visually presents that and if you've got like a bunch of sort of straps it can be like yeah here i am and the same thing like sort of around you like if you wear suspenders or put on some thigh highs it gives you that more curve and if you can appreciate your body and the curve you can be like yeah i earned this like i mean going to the gym or i've just been eating some potato chips like this is mine like it gives you that ownership and when you own it and you pick something that you love like the color with a little bit of that like uh i was gonna say flavor i guess it's flavor but actually that proportion and that um shaping you'll feel amazing in it like i have an emerald green lingerie set that i just love and i can't explain it but i just i think it's because it's one of my colors 
And when I put it on, I'm like, this is the best thing ever. I wish I could just wear this out. Not really, but kind of. <laughs> Cause how much fun can you have? Like wearing stuff. And if you wear lingerie underneath your clothes that make you feel that way, the clothes on top are just like a hat. They're just like an accessory. And all day long, you're just like, I am that girl. <laughs> And nobody even knows. It's like magic. It's like a secret, which makes it even more fun because you're like, you don't even know how cool I am underneath my clothes today. But I'm telling you just quietly, I am cool. <laughs> I used to, I used to do that in college with my well, very beginning of college because it was my high school boyfriend. But I used to do that. Like we'd go out to dinner and I'd have lingerie underneath I used to have so much lingerie when I was younger I thought it was the coolest thing and I do love lingerie still but I don't have nearly as much and I remember <laughs> I was moving um like with my because I still lived with my family in college and we were moving from one house to another and I told my my boyfriend at the time I was like I can't keep this in my house because I don't want I don't want somebody else to see it as we're moving I didn't want my parents to find out and he said he said, you can just put it, I'll just keep it in my car trunk. Like, okay, cool. <laughs> He's like, I'll take care of that for you. <laughs> so it's in his car trunk. I think nothing of it. His dad goes to do, I don't know what his dad was doing on his car, but all of a sudden he just gets called outside to his car <laughs> by his dad. Dad's like, what is this sun? Like, there's just like two bags full of all sorts of colors of lingerie in the back. Ah, uh, his dad told him to be careful and make sure he didn't get anyone pregnant. But I was like, oh my God, I was so mortified. I was probably like 19 years old. It's ridiculous. Well, we, anyway. Okay. We were like reading magazines and we were looking at stuff. As a teenager, we were pulled into this idea that I need to dress myself up. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm on that team. But as we grow older, we start to realize I mean, there's so many things that go into it, which is like, we realize men don't really give a shit about it. And we can just, oh, isn't that stupid? <laughs> it is, but it, I think it's like bringing us back home to, um, and then there's, you know, what I've realized recently is like, we heal the inner child and then it's like the inner teen comes out to play. Like as we get older, we're then stepping into those things that we like those traditions that we did for ourselves that we then lost. And I think a piece of it is like, you know, we were reading one of the magazines like Cleo and Cosmo and stuff. And they were like, dress up for your man and do all this and do that. And that's fine. But at a certain point, like, you know, once you buy a house, you got the car and you've got the kids and you're going to work and you're doing stuff and you're tired and you're like, I don't even know if I want to have sex with him. Like all of those things. And then you're like, why would I even spend time trying to like dress it out when he just wants to take it off and they'll constantly tell you that but we lose track of doing the things for us and when you lose track of that you lose the things that you actually did for yourself even though there was a combination of being hey you should dress it up that that's true the laundry is totally for me yeah the laundry like, is totally for me yeah you gotta feel like that's why it's important to like try stuff on and like close your eyes and what would I listen to? Would I be listening to like Pony by Genuine? Would I be listening to um, what's that Beyonce song? And it's like dance for you. Like, would you know Beyonce music? Are you gonna be going like you know um, Mariah Carey and a little bit of Honey? Like, what is the thing that just gets you like oh like into that feeling? And you're like, what would I like if I had any budget? what would I pick? What makes me just feel, oh, I could close my eyes and roll around on the floor, just like pure ecstasy. That's the type of feeling. And then oh, one of those sparkly bras. <laughs> you remember that? Do you remember when we were younger? I don't know if Victoria's Secret even still does this. Do you remember when it was a big deal for them to have their fashion show and they would have that one super fancy bra? Yeah. That's, yeah. that's mine if I had unlimited income. So that's probably like the thing that you can go and get similar of. So obviously a $3 million bra is not appropriate or like you can't even look after it, but you can get something that's similar. There's like metallic thread. You can get um, sequins. You can um, think of ways that they've like creatively used lace and other like bits of jewels and stuff. Like there are so many cool pieces of lingerie out there and you can also make it your own. People forget you're completely free to buy something, take it home and alter it. 
you're allowed to like sew something on it. And if it's lingerie just for you to like feel your sexiest, like throw some glitter on that. Throw some glitter on you. Like get like loose glitter or you can get um body glitter, like spray, or you can get hairspray and put it on. Like if you want to feel sparkling like a disco ball, which I do. So I obviously have glitter in my cupboard and I know how to do this because that's what I want to feel. And then when I go out and I'm feeling my best, everybody's like, wow, you look amazing. Like at New Year's, I wore like a sequin dress because I thought that was the dress code for the night and went and got some um, glitter hairspray and sprayed that all over. So I was the sparkle as well. And everybody's like, damn, you look so good. And I was like, they, what label is it? And I was like, it's a second hand dress I bought for $10. Like, they all fell on the floor. Every single one of them, like, are you sure? I was like, yeah. It's just, I literally snuck out of work one day at lunchtime to go buy it because <laughs> I walked past the store and saw it. I was like, I'm coming back for you at lunchtime. And it was only $10. So it was because I was feeling that way and I wanted to be the sparkle and everybody was picking up on that energy, which is why we're talking about this and why we're talking about the energetics of sex, which is Alice is so important. Because, like, this week you and I had a conversation about that when somebody says, oh, she's got a high body count, like, or it's favoured if she's been in a relationship for, in theory, yeah. it's not all men and all people, we know that. But there is this, like, general monkey assumption, which we really wanted to talk about this week, that if – she's been in like a five year eight year 10 year 19 year relationship she's somehow cleaner and more pure than somebody who has been single and dated say five guys or like in that 20 year time frame or whatever like numbers numbers are numbers and yeah, it's not matter uh energetically that matters we've all met that boy who has been with a million people and we get near him and we're like bleh, bleh. You can feel it. There was a guy when we were growing up that everybody was like, oh, he's such a man slut. And we just thought it was a joke. When we met him, my girlfriend and I, um, we were just like, oh, my God. You could tell. And it wasn't something about his words or, like, you know, trying to be suave with us and trying to hit on us. We were like, there was something ick about him. And it was because, you know, he was just sleeping with anybody who would, like, return his kiss that he just tried to land on them or whatever. Whereas somebody who is consciously aware of what they're doing, they cleanse their energy field. They're consciously aware of what they're stepping into. They're not, like you say, picking up what was deposited in your auric field. But to bring it back to that, like, 10-year, 19-year person, mm -hmm. what is there a real difference if a woman is being consciously in a sexual relationship, whether she's been with one man or five men in the same time frame, she still probably had the same amount of sex. So is it, if she's conscious, that different? Yeah. And I don't even think it's a matter of, like, some people will come back to, well, she's less likely to have any sort of like STD or VD, whatever you want to call it. I know they have a few different these days. And I just, I don't think that that's true because first of all, so many people get cheated on. So you have no way of knowing that. But second of all, like they're so treatable these days. There's so few of them that are even anything more than basically a cold for your vagina or your penis. Like it's just the location of it. And I'm not saying like, don't protect yourself or don't take it seriously if you get one or something. I'm just saying it's not this stigma that they created it to be when we were younger. Like everything is not AIDS. And so I don't think it's like, I think that's a, what is that term where you like, it's not gaslighting, but it's like where you, stra, straw man's argument. Anyway. Over-dramatized. Yeah, like where you're just, you're like putting the focus in the wrong area. You're distracting from the actual truth of the issue. Yeah. I, I actually saw something recently where um, a lady was saying this man was talking about women being with too many men. And uh, she's like, 
is it really that issue or is it that now she has someone to compare you to and you're really insecure about yourself because you like have to live up to other things? And honestly, I have to be completely honest. The only guys that have asked me about who I've been with previously, I would put in the insecure category. Most, most men don't ask. They don't care. Like we're all adults and they know that they've slept with multiple people and they assume that we've slept with multiple people. And if there's an issue, like I said, about if there's genuinely a concern about cleanliness, of like, hey, we're in a long-term relationship and we're not going to use condoms anymore and stuff like that. And so I just want to make sure, then you should both be mature enough to go get tested. Yeah. Like if you're not mature enough or secure enough to go get tested, then that's on you. That has nothing to do with how many people a woman has slept with. I also want to, this isn't so much the energetics, but I just want to mention, because I don't think some people know, like the vagina is a canal. It's a birthing canal. It is meant to stretch to let that baby through and come back to its original size. So this concept, this idea out there that the more people you sleep with, the looser you are, like, no. So you know what, sir, if you put your dick in here and all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, she's too loose. It's not her. It's your freaking penis size. I was actually watching Someone talk about how, like, when a woman is properly aroused, the vagina, like, shapes around the penis. It swells and shapes around it. Yeah. So if this guy is feeling, like, crazy loose in this girl, maybe take a step back and see, like, are we feeling connected? Did we have enough time to get her aroused? Like, is she wanting to have sex with me right now? Like, this, I think all those things have to do with poorly educated and or insecure men. I don't think they have any factual basis. Truth to them. Because if somebody, if you're in like, if you're like anywhere past probably the, what, the age of 23, if somebody's going to judge you on how many people you've slept with, what does that say about their thought process and their maturity? Like it is nothing to do with you. Like you and I have both been in long-term relationships and afterwards found out that the other person wasn't so secure um, sexually in what they were doing. And We've also you, both been cheated on. Yeah, you as a person who finds out that kind of physical deceit, it makes you, you're like, oh my God, I have done no thing outside of my morals and I have been a really, it's not what I want to say, it's like a good person, but you know, I've chosen the commitment and, you know, but it doesn't make me any less vulnerable because my partner has gone and made other choices and I've not been aware of it for like, some of them more than a year and it's multiple people so you didn't know at all and it yeah. it's nothing to do with the choices that you made you've made choices that you know align with your moral choices of committing to this person and sleeping with that person only their choices then affect you but you didn't do anything wrong but you still have to like manage and deal with the situation and there's so many ways like you could look at it but with the energetic side of it, it's a matter of like calling home your power and your energy, especially in those situations and you've been cheated on and it's, you didn't make those choices. You've got to remember, stand in your power and say, I didn't make those choices. I stood strong in my morals and my alignment and my commitment and oh, breathing deep on that and then just figuring out what do I physically got to do for my body to look after it. Like, do I need to go see a healer? Do I need to go see a doctor? Like, do I want some cleansing? Should I like, you know, put on an incense? Like, what do I need to do? Do I need to take a good bath and get clear on myself on what I need to do? And then also break out with that guy, obviously. But, you know, <laughs> we all don't necessarily break out with the guy when we find out he's cheated. Like, we get talked into it. And that's another whole uh, encompassing story itself. But it's just important to remember it's, how you treat yourself and realizing you can't control anybody outside of you and what do I want to do about this and then when somebody is like talking about this whole body count thing it's like hell fucking boring is that what you want to judge me on goodbye like seriously who counts how many people they sleep with who has time to do that like if you're in alignment with your moral compass and you're physically looking after yourself and you're energetically looking after yourself and you're a conscious person who knows his or her goals and you're moving forward in your life, you, you're, I don't know. Like what I'm going to sit down
Island talks, think about all the things that were a disappointment. I don't think so. Like, let's just talk about something that's realistic. Those things that were a disappointment. <laughs> let's just, I mean, because I'm scared. That's a really good response. <laughs> I'm super good at something. So uh, how many men have you slept with? Why? Do you want to know how many men have disappointed me? <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. Well, I'm just like, okay, well, then if you really want to be really smart about this, count boyfriends. Like, you wouldn't be like, how many people do you sleep with? When you want to know somebody who's affected me emotion emotionally, because that I'm a woman, I'm going to have sex with you emotionally. Wouldn't you want to figure that shit out? Like, it's not a mechanical game. This is not porn. <laughs> like okay okay so let's let's start with uh, <laughs> i want to explain some of the basics behind the energetics of sex Ella, so let's wrap back around to that and then we'll go um so first of all when we connect we're intermingling our auras so our energy is starting to get shared there are ways to protect your own energy and to choose not to intermingle those auras. You have to be really good at setting energetic boundaries. You have to know how to do it. Also, if you've already done it, there are ways to cleanse and clear that sort of stuff, which is important even if you're having... I took a course on sacred sexuality a couple of years ago, and I remember the lady, someone asking a question in the course um, because she was teaching us how to cleanse and clear everything from like past partners and things. And someone said, you know, that they've been with their husband for so long and blah, blah, whatever, like implying that she didn't need to clean it. And this lady said, you absolutely need to clean even if you're with the same partner. She said, because every time you're taking on that stuff, she said, so if he's coming home from work and he's had a bad day and stuff, all of that's getting mixed into your energy. And when they're climaxing, they're literally dumping that energy into you. Like you are a receptacle for that energy, yeah. whether you realize it or not. And you know what's so fascinating was yeah. I had someone, a man tell me later on, um, he wasn't my partner, but he was telling me how stressful his job was and how some days he didn't know how to de-stress. So he would come home and he would have anal sex with his wife but he would like turn her around like so that she wasn't even, like he was literally using her as that receptacle. He didn't know it. He didn't know the energetics of sex, but he like instinctively did that. He was like, I can't handle all of this mess that's happening with me. So I'm going to go home. I'm going to release. Well, guess what happens? He goes home. So he releases. He's done with that energy. He feels better, which is exactly why he keeps doing it. And she doesn't know that she just took on all of his crap. And it's like, I told him, like, in that conversation, I was like, I explained to him, I don't know if he ever stopped or not, but I explained to him, I was like, first and foremost, here's what's happening. Second of all, you need to stop it. And third of all, you can't tell me that story again. So I don't know if it ever changed, but like people do this and it's not always as direct and aggressive as that example I just gave. You know, I mean, how many times have we had a partner come home and they've been super stressed from one thing or another? You know, maybe they are in sports and their team lost, or maybe it is work or they've been traveling or whatever and they come home and that's the way we comfort them. We reconnect with them through sex and we comfort them and we're taking that on. Mm -hmm. And it really wasn't meant to be anything except for love and support. So we have to know how to like not take that on, how to cleanse and clear it if we do take anything on. And it can be as simple as, and this is where I always start people for cleansing and clearing it, if they don't have any experience in doing their own energy work and stuff like that, is just literally take a shower. Take a shower with the idea of, I am cleaning this all off. And if you believe in a higher power, just use prayer as you're doing it. Say your prayer as you're doing it. That will cleanse and clear what you need to. And you can use different types of water. So like you can have a salt bath. Um, you can mm -hmm. add it types of oils if you want like the hotter the better like that's why we feel so good like when we're like oh I just like sweated it out or I just like released it and I try to when I'm feeling those times not specifically related to sex but cleansing mm -hmm. I will in my shower head is a waterfall and I'm just clearing away with fresh water and I'm like oh yes like we are in the middle of the tropics right now and it's just you know disappearing and it's gone and you know my um plumbing system is going to take care of it and it's going to go and be cleansed in a physical way 
And then when I walk out of the shower, you know, that's when you can treat yourself to other things to help. Because the other thing of that is like when you've taken on energetics and you cleanse, you leave a space. So you can often feel like you need to fill it. So when you like leave the shower or you clear that intention and you feel like you may all of a sudden feel hungry or you may all of a sudden be like, oh, I need to go have sex again. Cause like, like there is like this energetic hole. And so it's finding ways pre-purposely, like what you want to do about that. Do you want to put on a nice candle and listen to some music and just feel whole within yourself? Do you want to journal? Do you want to call a girlfriend? Do you want to like put on your favorite lingerie and your favorite color? Like what is the thing that is going to help you like reset back to you and your alignment and how you gain your energy? Do you want to like watch a comedy? Do you want to fill your bucket? Then once you're filled up, with something that you've chosen not like an outlet because you normally can't it's like defining like if i all of a sudden feel like i need to call him after i've got to the shower and done this i would say don't do that just wait just maybe send him like a kiss and a text message or something like don't don't do and if it's an ex definitely don't like send your girlfriend just say hey feeling like i miss want to message him i'm not gonna but so you're getting the message cool like just have that like support network that catches you in those moments that work or don't work and realize when you are cleansing you often feel like you are available and vacant and be okay with that we're so used to like charging forward and being told to go do that whole masculine stuff that we talk about uh-huh. when you're feminine you are receiving so you used to be like oh like an empty space uh-huh. a you know like feeling like the ocean like yeah it's like and it's okay to feel that and other emotions sometimes will come up other thoughts will come up and be okay with that be okay if you're like what if I just never have good sex again and have a cry? Like whatever is the thing and be okay with that. That's not necessarily the truth, but in the moment, be okay that that's what comes up. Because once you've cleansed from this maybe icky energy of an ex that cheated on you and you've just been, I don't know, last two years moving through some healing stuff, you come across this video, you're like, oh my God, this is right in alignment. You go and have your shower and you get out or you have your bath or you go for your walk or you go to the ocean, you put your feet in it and like a saltwater bucket, like whatever it is you're called to do, be okay with that. Be okay with emotions going to come up. It just means that they were already there, but you were stuffing it down you're bogging it down and long story short you'll die sooner than you were meant to <coughs> it's stuck <in> body. <laughs> yeah i was going to add i love your suggestion to refill your bucket afterwards one thing i teach that um is quicker in case you're like i don't have the time don't have the attention span or just starting out whatever your reason is is like I will do the cleansing part, so shower, whatever. And then I just, I like to imagine pink energy, like a soft pink energy. And I just flood myself with like a pink energy light. And that's my way of saying, fill me with unconditional love. Anywhere that there's a gap, fill that in with unconditional love. So you can do something like that too that's more of like a meditation and it can be quicker you can make this absolutely into a super feminine thing and a ritual and you can have a lot of fun with it. And I like to do that from time to time, but don't let that deter you from doing it. If that feels overwhelming, right? Like if it feels like, I don't know what to do or I don't have the time or you're overwhelmed by it or anything, like keep it simple because at the end of the day, it's all intention. Yes. Your intention to have your autonomy your bodily autonomy and to cleanse and clear your energy and you will be supported in that and that's why it doesn't matter what mode you pick it doesn't matter if you set an intention take a shower go for a walk what is the thing like you just say oh how would it feel good to release this i get goosebumps thinking that like how good would it feel to release this and whatever comes to you go do that like go do that like if it's like having a green smoothie and as you're drinking it being like this is going to cleanse and soothe and add so much nutrients to my body and then carry on with your day. And if you do that like five days in a row, your skin is going to beam and you're just going to be like, was that it? 
because your life is the ritual. It's not about like setting aside time, like half an hour every day to journal or when I get in the shower, I need to remember all these things. Because sometimes it's hard to remember the order in which you're doing all the things because so much is going on. It, it is hard. You can just get in the shower and just stand there and do nothing because your point is to just release and let go. You don't have to be doing in order for this to happen as long as like you've decided like the places that matter and the other thing about it is if you're new to the energetic side of things we're made of a couple of different things we're just not a physical being and this is why when somebody walks into the room that's upset this is why you know even if you haven't seen their face because it's not their face you feel their emotions because their emotions are coming from their body and it's like triggers into their heart and your heart is your biggest energetic field your brain is like this and like the field around it the energy field and your heart is huge so if you're feeling really low and you walk in you one you'll be dressed like it and two people in the room who are available to feel will feel it and that's because we are made of energy like at the very cellular level scientists have worked out <laughs> there's not a lot of stuff in there what is it it's a lot of energy that is not a physical matter it's something else which is a whole other conversation but realizing this is part of life we have these triggers we know that i'm an energetic person we know that i'm a physical person and there are a couple of different ways to like manage that and that's why it's important to have your brain your heart online and to figure out what is your ritual that's going to do this for you. And then also remembering as you're doing it, like not berating yourself. If somebody cheated on you or if you feel like, oh, I've got a high body count or somebody's judging me or I'm out, like, I don't know what to say when people are like questioning me on dates and stuff like that. Just come back to center for you and just throw those thoughts away and be like, those are not mine. Bye. Yeah. And then another thing would be that every person we have sex with, we create an energetic hook with. Yes. And that, so then our energy flows back and forth between the two of us. And so if you haven't cleansed and cleared that, you can go back now and with each of those partners, cleanse and clear that to whatever depth you want to. Like if it's overwhelming for you or you're new to it or whatever, you know, like you can just write a list of all the names and then prayerfully take care of that. I do teach a way of like going along and you could cut the cords. Some people feel good cutting the cords. Other people want to pull the cords out of them. Like you can do those sort of things. You can work with someone like I do this with women. Um, there's lots of energy workers though that can help with this sort of stuff. But like I walk the women I work with through cleansing and clearing and learning how to do that stuff. So keeping in mind that you can do this. And I do remember it was in that same course I was telling you about earlier, that sacred sexuality course. Um, one of the, she had us make a list of all of our past lovers. And one of these, like, I can't remember the basketball guy. <laughs> She's like, just put down basketball guy. Like, it's okay. You don't need to know their name and stuff. It's energetic, like you were saying. As soon as you know that it's the basketball guy, you have some memory. Your body has accessed a memory there. It knows the energy, and you can cleanse and clear that. So don't worry about it. And the other thing is, it's like, this can be a process. It's not like you're watching this episode, and you're like, oh, shit, I didn't know this. I've got to go clear this tonight, and everything has to be like a pure slate tomorrow, like a clean white slate tomorrow. You can do this in layers. Like, it's energy work. So you want to be conscious of that and you want to release it as your body is capable of it. Especially in long-term relationships because it's like the way that your neurology and your memories work, your energy works. So you don't just have like this slight attachment to that person. If you've been with them for 10 years or more, you've got a well-worn path to that person. Like you physically know them so well, like you could – close your eyes and be standing backwards and know all the things that shows you like your biochemical reaction, your neurological, your energetic connections with that person. And if it took you 10 years to create them, it's going to take some time to undo that. It's not going to be overnight. And this is part of what's interesting about, you know, what started this conversation with, you know, um, being judged on how high your body count is versus 
not ever. Nobody talks about what about if it's in comparison to this woman in the last five years, she's dated two guys or she was in one long-term relationship. Technically, the woman in the long-term relationship probably had more sex and it is more in brain because of that energetic structural connection so realistically if you looked at that if the woman in the last five years had been with two partners and had sex with them and was only over the course of totality like two years out of the five and she's done her healing work and she's now dating and available different woman to the one who was in that long-term relationship for five years having sex with that same man and his drama and bullshit <laughs> probably <laughs> and she's probably not gone out and done the work and done the disconnection and all of that stuff and she's not as available and nobody talks about that they see a woman who's been in a long-term relationship is more trustworthy more everything it's nothing to do with that that person needs time they need to like that's why you know people have the conversation about um after divorce how long has it been like that's why people have the debates of like if you were together for four years it's going to take you eight to get over it or some drama like that like it's, numbers are irrelevant it's how you feel and your energy field and if some person's swinging from relationship the relationship like if she's got out of a 5 10 20 year relationship or marriage and it's been two months she's still connected energetically right so there is no way that it is a how would you say it um smart judgment of like the woman who's been with a higher body count versus a woman who one hasn't been in a relationship at all complete lengths like or one that's been in a permanent relationship like these are all different things they're all different people and circumstances and i think that conversation is just utter shit well uh, <laughs> yes and i'd like to point out i'm going to point out something personal about you but um Neither of us have a high, put my fingers in here, <laughs> a high body count. Um, so it's not like we're not sitting here like pissed and, off about this or being, we're not here because we're like, oh my God, someone told us we had a high body count. Like we just genuinely think the discussion around this is ridiculous. It's so stupid. Honestly, it doesn't take into account real life and people keep, perpetuating this and like dating coaches or sharing the information and every time i see it i'm like do they not know how life works do they not know but most people don't which is why these you know why we started this conversation and why we have the yeah. conversation have because and how you and i connect because people don't talk about this they're scared they're scared to dissect what does it mean and like work through the grub and have down days and have good days and figure out is it physical is it emotional is it psychological is it neurological is it biochemical like it is so hard to learn all that shit. but like sarah and i have spent the time so <laughs> like this is our kind of jam but you know what on the topic of that of not having a high body count mm -hmm. my ex-boyfriend a few years ago got mad because i hadn't because i didn't have enough experience and it was so like, <laughs> what? Like the conversation with him. And he was just, he was like seething because he was like, what do you mean you don't know? And I was like, uh, and you know, from, and it was such a like this weird double standard, which started some of the thinking process for me of like, what, what, what? Like, cause I'd always thought, you know, it's like high body count or good girl or blah, 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 like all that stuff. And I was like, oh that's a weird standard like you need to be like pure and least body count but like act like a porn star wait how? how like and then like the conversation as we've talked about that goes further is we don't even like porn star sex it is not sex it's gross like they're like we don't want that either and so there's like this like twisted stuff around the reality of life and it's so exciting because you and I have both talked to incredible men who are conscious, who are present, who can have these conversations, who can go, you know what? It's nothing to do with how many people she slept with or not slept with or how long the relationship was or wasn't. It is who she is. And what is that? 
that is who you are energetically, which is why we advocate for cleansing and getting square and in alignment. Because in a relationship, what is a relationship? It's the space between you. It's how you look after this. What is that? That is energy. These are your emotions. These are your experiences. And that's why this is such an important conversation. Something to like spark your mind of like, I guess somebody did say that to me one day. Or when you see it on social media, call it out. Be like, bullshit. Like, share it with your girlfriends if you really want to share it. And have the conversation. Stitch it on TikTok and call it for bullshit. And say this is not standard practice. This is not realistic. This is not reality. Reality is what are relationships? What are they built on? Who am I? What do I bring to the table? Am I the table? Like whatever is the conversation you want to have that is reality. And we're shifting into that, which is the exciting thing because we can have these conversations that people be like, Boo! get off stage. People are now like, I see what you're saying. I see the bricks you're laying down. I think that makes sense. Yeah. All right. Well, that's what we have for today. So do you, I don't know. Do you have anything you want to add? Like I, I think we covered a lot with. Yeah. And I think it's treat your own path. Like we're at that point where what mm -hmm. you do is what works. Like, you, like listening to other experts and if it doesn't feel in alignment or you're like, oh my gosh, or it feels bad or you berate yourself. You've already been raised by parents or you're an adult now. You don't need somebody to tell you what to do. You need to do the right thing and follow that instinct and fucking love yourself. Like love yourself for showing up and love yourself for exploring this. And, you know, I think of it like expanding your um, listening portfolio and just being like, what's this for me? I don't really know. And entertaining a potential idea and throwing it out if it doesn't work. And being okay with that. Being okay with reality is not what magazines and TV tell me. Reality is what I make it. I say yes or no. This is my body and my life. And if somebody's going to sit in front of me and judge me for my body count, say goodbye permanently because that person is probably also not good in bed. Perfect ending note. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Real Life, Real Love. Uh, feel free to leave any comments you have, any questions you have below. And if you have any ideas or topics you'd like for us to cover on future episodes, please leave those below. Like and share, of course, so that we can reach more women and help more people. And we'll see you next